We had a big weekend of football, some absolute dominating performances, and some people that pooped in their big boy pants. We're going to get into it all on today's episode, walk you through each player in each game, and talk some trash about a couple of bad trash quarterbacks. Like this video, uh, leave a comment, let us know how your weekend went, and enjoy the show. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Oh, we're up real high. Ah. <laughs> it's good to be here, guys. Oh, it sounded like Morty. <laughs> Monday, November 21st. Welcome into the show, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Yeah, baby. I stay up real high when my Cardinals are playing on Monday Night Football, Mike. Oh, is it for the elevation right, of mile, Mexico City? Mile high Mexico City. Yeah. I think it, it's, it's higher. It's even than, higher than, yeah. Yeah, higher than Denver or, or wherever they play the Broncos games. Yeah, they play them in Denver, Mike. Well, I just I wasn't sure if that's one of those things where they call them that, like the San Francisco 49ers. I don't believe they play in San Francisco. You ever watched a football game? Yeah. Okay. Uh, New Jason? York, New York Jets. Yeah, the New York teams are really funny because they don't play in that state. Boy, I, I'm i sick of Zach Wilson. Yeah. Oh, well, 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 well. Sick and tired. If it isn't the consequences of my own actions. <laughs> That's the Jets. I mean, this is, uh, it's one of those awkward situations for football teams where mm -hmm. the money in the future is supposed to be a certain player who isn't the best for the team right now by any stretch of anyone's imagination. And from a physical skills standpoint, I think that there was a lot to like about Zach Wilson. But from a mental standpoint, if you walk off the field throwing for 77 yards <laughs> on nine completions. I forgot how bad it was. <laughs> with your wide receiver room desperately wanting to call you out but trying to take get all on the chin themselves and you say you didn't let the defense down and you say that Did you're he? not the he said that verbatim wow wait to the press to the press no yes they said no Did he didn't i thought that was all just like well he didn't rumbling let, let me, let me state room. it exactly what happened they said uh your defense went out and gave up three points the offense only throwing uh scoring three points do you feel like you let your defense down in any way no, no, not at all. Mm, that so that, be, that was the quote. But and he did let his defense I say that's, down. That's a real easy one. Just go, yeah, next question. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I think that that's my point here is that I'm going to uh, attack the response to adversity because the, a leader at, at a quarterback position says, you know, maybe they don't say, yeah, I let him down, but they say, you know what? We got to be a lot better. Yeah, we got. I got to execute. I got to be better. I got to be better. I mean, they uh, quarterbacks. You're not giving anything up. You're still the quarterback. If who's, you say that, who's handling it worse, Zach Wilson or Russell Wilson? Because Russell Wilson, well, there's has delusion been, on the other pendulum. <laughs> I mean, Russell Wilson has he's he is literally destroying his career. Like the, I, I would have thought that he is a Hall of Fame quarterback. Like. You know, there's all the conversation. Oh, is Philip Rivers? Is Eli Manning? Is Russell Wills? How do you put a guy who's who gets a massive contract and is as bad as Zach Wilson in the Hall of Fame? You can't. I feel like he's playing his way out. Uh, no touchdowns from Russell Wilson against the Raiders this week. None. Zero. Tried to get one. Got called back. Um, Plus, that's not his fault. No, that was Kendall Hinton. That's that's on him. Yeah, I, I just I'm just frustrated because the best player for the Jets, the Jets are a playoff team with Joe Flacco. Yeah, I mean they win that game easily with Joe Flacco. Are they a playoff team with Mike White? I don't know. I don't know. Mistakes matter, and they were obviously trying to prevent Zach Wilson from like losing the game himself, and they lost it anyways. I 
We don't have to talk about him anymore. Can we move on? Yeah, Can we react? You, you in a brought mu- him up <laughs> in a much more. Well, I've I've defended. The How ta- do we not have yeah. him in our Monday Punday? That's the that's the real crap. Question. Wilson. There you go. Thank you. That was really easy. Uh, I thought it was just like Zach Wilson. That's the. Oh, that's, oh, that's it. too mean, Mike. That was too mean. <laughs> The Jets fans will be furious. I've already, I've already heard. I've seen us on, him. No, at us. I, I've seen on Twitter. How come you don't talk about Kyler Murray this way? When he goes nine for seventy-seven. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll I'll, put him I'll on rip blast. him. But when he goes nine for seventy-seven, that will be due to an injury in the first quarter. Anyways, all right. This is the part where I move on. Here we go. Let's get sophisticated with a neutral site. Amari Super. Mm, yes, he was. How about Samaj Three Ryan? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> or Tyler Void. He didn't yeah. catch a pass, did Where he? Where was he? Did he not catch one? He, he, I think he caught a Maybe pass. Maybe he did. Saquon Barfley. Mm-hmm. Not as delicious as Jamal Williams. <laughs> <laughs> or, oh my gosh, you were Palmer. Oh, yeah. That's pretty good. And uh, there was Yavid Montgomery. <laughs> this might be my favorite. PP Lamb. <laughs> of course it's your favorite. because well, it's PP. And that guy, Jerk Cousins. Yeah, and Kadarius Phony. Oh, no. Oh, Chris Olavie. <laughs> okay, Chris Osuave. I feel like you guys set a very early uh, precedent of liking things with yay too much. I feel like you guys were really well, in the take yay. A, take you were a in the moratorium on that. A little yeah. moratorium. Yeah. You want to reduce the. Uh, well, it's at the be- Yeah, like when a joke was really funny at the beginning, I liked it. Yeah, you don't. You we can't overplay it. Well, I just think our submissions are disproportionately yay related. It's a really easy way to do it. Uh we've got a megalodon episode on Wednesday. Oh, megalodon. Gosh, she's got a hairball. Uh, don't miss Wednesday's episode. It will be uh, long. It will be delicious. If you have um, access to at-home IV bags, we recommend right. it just yeah, to yeah, prepare yeah. either day before, day of, maybe day after, or all three. That's becoming more of a thing, the at-home IVs, and it's, it's helpful for Megalodon season. Mm-hmm. I think we... Are we getting them in here? Oh, for sure. Okay. Oh, During? <laughs> We're just yes. hooked up to the drip <laughs> I mean, for the show. Like, can we get the oxygen masks and everything? I wonder if they ever start like uh, making that a, a thing where you could just wear one, like wearable IVs. I would, I would do that in a heartbeat if I could install a plug. I just can't, I can't get the actual needle. Mm. Yeah, forty years old, still a big baby, huh? Yeah, <laughs> that's that is very uh. well said, Andy. <laughs> Doctor gave me an owie. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you put it like that, um, I bet Zach Wilson can't handle an IV either. No way. <laughs> oh, uh, leave him alone. I've got years of bitterness because I defended that man. Uh, no, they don't all end up like Josh Allen, I guess. It's it is the worst. It is the worst when you for just you're like okay, I I see the path for this player, and you just you keep look, guys. I see the path. Look at the tools. And you just go and. And then that, when you hit your turning point on that player, oh man, they they are your they, most hated player in the NFL. You figured it out. <laughs> and uh, if, for the record, you should have seen us in the studio when Chase Claypool got that end zone target. Oh <laughs> man, it was so we were up and screaming. It we was knew that was the play right to him, and it was right to him. Uh. And there was a penalty. And uh, look, uh, thankfully, Jason, you don't have to be scared of me anymore. Yeah, I was getting a little freaked out. Yeah. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. I hadn't even seen this. Uh, I guess it was prior to Sunday kickoff. The Justin Jefferson toe injury was a case of mild turf toe. Which um, is... Or as Mike will call it, toe toe turf? Yeah, you got to look out for the toe turf. Yeah, I mean, you don't want him to have mild toe turf uh that being said when he then goes out and puts up one of his worst games of the season you get a little concerned but at the same time I don't know how much is the toe versus how much was the ball got to Kirk Cousins at the same time the defense did oh all my god long I don't know 
Uh, it, it was, what could he do? I, I don't even know if Justin Jefferson could start his route. The Yeah, the pun should have been hurt Cousins, not jerk Cousins, because he didn't do anything. He, he just caught the ball and then was pancaked. You can't be mad at Kirk Cousins. You can only feel bad for Kirk. If you watch that game, I felt genuinely like, Man, that is too sad what he's going through. That right flight now. back from Dallas. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Little, little different. Little different. Uh, Justin Fields injured his left shoulder on Sunday. Yeah. Go it's ahead. His, it's his non. Yeah, well, it was. It's his non throwing shoulder happened um, after it seemed like he was having hamstring issues. Um, I was looking th into this because I. I'm more concerned with the hamstring issue, sure. but he ran a ton in the first half, as he has the last several games, and then all of a sudden he's getting stretched out on the sidelines, he's not running that much, and when he is running in the second half, it was slow. That's kind of what caused this issue where he landed on his non-throwing shoulder, but assuming that it is not you know anything serious, which we would have heard about by now, he can get an injection in that, he will play, but... Um, hopefully it was just like cramping in the hamstrings, not any kind of uh, tear. Did he fall on it before he got hit? Uh, no. Okay. Yeah, he he fell he, directly on the shoulder. Okay, because he, he also took a shot where he, he was sliding and a player hit him and you could yeah, but his face instantly reacted to the shoulder. The ends of these games for Justin Fields lately have been getting up very slowly, like yeah. after every single tackle. Kyle Pitts hyperextended his right knee, did not return. The team is, quote, hopeful all major ligaments are intact. This MRI is, today could be an MCL sprain and a bone bruise. Yeah, uh, this is really, without him. really good news uh, all the way around because it's not any kind of catastrophic career-threatening, year-threatening injury. It does not seem, and he won't be out there to hurt you in your fantasy oh. lineups. So this is like win-win, right? Jason, Jason. It's poor Mr. Pitts had an injury. Yeah, and we're we're hope we're we're celebrating, we're celebrating that, that not, he's not really hurt. Yeah, or, that it's not hurt, like but it's not serious. Yeah, see, not I, a serious I think Mike ACL was deciding injury. which way to go with that joke. No, no, no. I, no you I, were always in with Jason. Um, I agree that it helps fantasy football that you don't have to make that decision anymore. Joe Mix and Matthew Stafford both exited early with concussions. The Stafford one is. I mean, they lost again, and I would not be surprised if he missed another week. Wandale Robinson. Oh, man. See, this is what I'm talking about. Like, Kyle Pitts did not have what happened to Wandale, and this was so sad. Wandale was on his way to his best performance as a pro. Nine for 100 on 13 targets. Tore his ACL and uh, will be gone for a long, long time. I was watching the game just incredibly excited. I mean, one, Wandale's been a player we've kind of highlighted throughout the entirety of the season of the skill set, the draft capital. He's needed by this Giants team. He just he came into the season uh, a bit injured and he couldn't get on the field, and we hadn't seen the breakout game, and this was it. This was the breakout game for the rookie. I fully believe after this he would have taken over, been a huge part of the offense, and I was excited. Like, oh, man, waiver day. We get to talk about Wandale, like how – how hard in the paint do you go after him? And then we the game ends with this. Yeah, it's it's terrible. Sterling Shepard already knocked out for the same injury this year. This is the first game where the Giants kind of offensive game plan of just sticking around or being barely ahead. It didn't go as planned, and they were throwing it Wandale's way all day. Mm -hmm. Steelers running back Jalen Warren, hamstring injury, didn't return. I noticed that uh, Brooksy here, if you're watching the show, he took his chance to throw mm. Najee Harris up on the wall. He's, Najee had his best game of the year. That's, that's back to back good games. It is, and he is currently sitting at running back three on the week after a hundred all purpose yards, uh, two touchdowns. So if if Warren is gone, maybe this is you know look, it was the bye week, and then they came off the bye where Najee has over ninety yards on the ground both weeks. Chase Edmonds ankle injury for the Broncos. Mike Williams. Aggravated his right ankle Aye. in the first quarter, didn't return. I feel bad for all of the people that pivoted off of Josh Palmer to Mike Williams, yeah. to Keenan Allen, or to Kadarius Toney on the other side. Those were the decisions people were making. It seemed like the, if Palmer was going to be a lock in lineups. Then the Mike Williams and Keenan Allen news comes, and it throws everybody for a, uh, you know, 
it just creates a mess. Yeah, I, we're right there with you. Palmer was my start of the week, and then when it looked like Mike Williams, Keenan Allen were both active, I kept saying, like, I just, um, I'm, I love Palmer if one of them is gone, but not if both of them are there. I, I have Josh Palmer on my bench against Mike. Thankfully, I pivoted to Devin Singletary, who had a good game. But yeah. um, if you pivoted to Kadarius yeah, Tony, good, who got injured thing. and left the game, you're you're reeling. Um, and obviously, Mike Williams going down. This is um, he came back too quick. And and Palmer, what he did was not just uh, get fantasy points in the absence of Mike Williams. He looked really good. He was demanding Finally, targets. Finally, this was yes. the game that we had w wanted to see from him. So he was physically a force out there, and he was eight for one hundred six and two touchdowns. I think this is one of those things that is going to write his script for when Mike Williams is back. This is I, I'm going to keep playing Palmer. Um, obviously, it's not going to always be the Kansas City Chiefs matchup was really good. We knew that you got to throw to keep up. But he played well, and Mike Williams, I mean. He's going to miss time. Yeah, right? He has Keenan to. was good, though, 5 for 94. So uh, he will get worked into the mix and, more and, and more. I don't know if you'd see him, but Keenan mentioned like the, the plan fully for him was to be on limited snaps, and then Mike Williams got hurt, and they said they had kind of had to throw that plan out, and he ended up playing more than he was supposed to. Kadarius Tony hamstring injury in the Sunday night football game. Jason, Jason, you said his hamstrings are made of rubber bands from the 90s. Is yeah. that confirmed? Yeah, but uh, they were left in the sun for sure. many of those years. And then Clyde Edwards-Alaire is going to miss some time. High, Isaiah, high I, ankle sprain. Isaiah Pacheco, two weeks in a row of <laughs> really good work yeah, on the ground. Good. If you're in a non-PPR standard scoring league, he is quite excellent. He doesn't have the touchdowns right now and isn't – you know, Jarek McKinnon is the pass catching back. So there's still some limitations to his upside, but it looks great on I the I feel ground. like we need a sound effect for Isaiah Pacheco. How fast he, he needs the cartoon running <laughs> sound effect because he moves his legs twice as fast as a normal running back. Yes. He needs to slow down. Like, <laughs> genuinely. He needs to start slower. He oh Let I the I, play I, develop. <laughs> yes, <he needs. laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really good. I mean, that's that. That is what happens. And I remember Andy Reid in the preseason when when Pacheco, the Pacheco hype was going, he talked about how he 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 needs to not give it a hundred at all times. He's too. He's the inverse <laughs> Lev Bell. Yes, like yes. Lev Bell's all super patient and Pacheco just like, did 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 a little, little <laughs> patience. Let the let the line develop a hole. He and then did did He's got a good chance at, yeah. at being a contributor here and and. Uh, Jarek McKinnon as well. Cardinals are expected to start Colt McCoy tonight, Monday Night Football. Um, Kyler's not ready. So you can follow that to game time. If you have both of those players on your roster, make sure you do. And then DeAndre Hopkins, officially questionable, but it was reported that it was a maintenance day last week when he missed. So I think we're all caught up. I'm seeing the producers, they're nodding. Brooks is nodding. What, what hat is that, Brooks? I can't see what's on your hat over there. Got a uh, Kevin Parker of Team Impala. No, over okay, here. okay, yeah. I, have I seen that hat before? I worn it a few days. Mm, it's just it's normally new. backwards. Do do not people... feeling super cool today, Brooks? Nah, I should have played Josh Palmer. Oh, oh. yeah, you're yeah. not cool. Uh, that was today's news and notes, brought to you by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com/insurance. <laughs> Studs of the Week, presented by Madewell. Into the studs we go. Joseph Burrow. Hey, oh. 355 and 4. 55! Thank you, Samaj P. Ryan. Well, I look, thank you, T. Higgins. I mean, it felt like Joe Burrow could, it was on instant replay. He would fade back to pass and then throw to the left and then T Higgins would be open by four or five feet and right then, but why didn't the three touchdowns then go to T right. Higgins all right Mike I understand what you're saying here thank you you didn't start P Ryan like we all did well the concussion knocked out Joe Mixon yep and then uh Samaji P Ryan was on the other end of three of the four touchdowns big game for Burrow Patrick Mahomes over 300 yards again 
three touchdowns. They all went to Travis Kels three. Okay, okay. Uh, Jacoby Brissett, monster game. Looked great in this one. Um, they'll be one more Jacoby game, Tampa Bay, and then they, they're going to switch over to Voldemort. Voldemort. Yeah. Daniel Jones. Start of the week. Strangely great game for a game in which they were whooped. <laughs> I mean, they were just plain whooped. Don't worry about that. <laughs> well, that's that's what they kind of don't need. care. That's two, what they kind of picks. needed to have a good Daniel Jones it's true. game because you know so many of these Giants games are like you know uh, nineteen to sixteen victories, uh, and so you needed the Detroit Lions offense to do work and and get out to a lead. And I believe this is three wins in a row for the Lions. That's yeah. shocking. For, for Daniel Jones, his his passing yardage high of the season was two seventeen. This is why I <laughs> he wasn't went for three forty. I wasn't sure it was going to be prescriptive for Wandale because you know, I don't think this is necessarily prescriptive for Daniel Jones. Three forty one. What did you say his high was? Two seventeen or so. So he's like a hundred and yeah, twenty yards above is normal, but 50 on the ground, rushing touchdown, Dallas next week, so watch out. Don't play him. Yeah. Uh, Jalen Hurts, <laughs> one ninety and one, but he had 86 rushing yards and a touchdown. Always gets it done. Same with Justin Fields. Those two doing pretty much the same work on the ground, 85 and one for Justin Fields. Be okay, Justin. I, I was going to say, I don't know. Be okay. I know that there people are hopeful he'll play. I certainly am hopeful. But we're going to have to watch those practice reports this week. Yeah, he had, I believe, almost 70 rushing yards in the first half. So that 85 rushing yard line is, you know, that, it was it was concerning. His, uh, yeah, third quarter, I think he had like negative two or two yards. So Andy Dalton, three <laughs> touchdowns, no picks against oh, the Rams, man. 21 for 25, including a big old bomb. The Rams. B.O.B. to Olave. The Rams are bad. They really are. Mm -hmm. This is that credit card thing, right? Yep. Yeah, they're they are paying their debts they right lost. now, which I'm I'm sure the Rams fans are like, yeah, yeah, fair enough. They lost another offensive lineman in this game. I I, I can't remember. Are they down to just tight ends, like five tight ends across the line? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're gonna start playing linebackers. And can <laughs> okay, can you make a deal with the NFL and say we're gonna not have offensive linemen, all tight ends? But they're all eligible. Ooh, that'd be fun. Like flag football rules. Nope. No? No, you can't do that. No. I think you can. Uh, but a, why? Because you couldn't <laughs> stop the offense ever. <laughs> you could not possibly stop it if you could leak out all the line. Yeah. Imagine all of those guys trying to do a route at the exact same time. There's a maximum eligible. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, quick break. Back with the running backs. Well, 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 let's talk about these Cowboys running backs that cannot be stopped. Tony Pollard is electric. He's do, do, he's do, quite do, good. Do, do. 80 yards on the ground, 109 through the air, two touchdowns. Both of his touchdowns. I want to see his, his miles per hour mm. on those because he was screaming down the sideline. I believe he's the running back eight. Really? On the, on the, season. the year. Wow. I, be I believe he yeah. is. Zeke, 15 for 42 and two in his first game back. It was best case scenario if you took a chance on Zeke. He had 15 carries and got in the end zone two times, so uh, he paid out. The Vikings could not stop the run at all, all game long, and Dallas got up to such a big lead so quick that they just didn't need to throw the ball anymore. I mean, it really isn't fair to to PP Lamb to oh. call him that because it wasn't like he had a bad game. He had an amazing sideline catch at the end of the first half. Just they didn't need to throw the ball. The uh the NFC North right now is is interesting because every single team in that division has a negative point differential. And that includes the eight and two Minnesota Vikings. They have scored fewer points than their opponents. This is why the, the, the line was what it was. Yeah. So I think earlier in the show I said mm -hmm. Dallas. They were in Dallas, but it was in Minnesota, right? It was in Minnesota. So um but, yeah, they had won every single game by a single score. So this was a bit of a uh, maybe yep. you're not what you think you are. Uh, the minus two point differential thing, it's it's a funny anecdote, and it's true. It is. It's very funny. But when you lose 40 to three, that's, you erase that, a lot of wins. That's going to swing that point differential uh, 37 points. 
All right, uh, Jamal Williams, three more rushing touchdowns, leads the NFL with 12. Can't be stopped. Reminds me of James Conner last year, who was putting up touchdown after touchdown. Reminds me of all the times I played Jamal Williams last year and did, <laughs> did not get this. And, Jay Willie. And the reality is, like, there is no reason to go away from it. Because if they're inside the five and you give the ball to Jamal Williams, he's getting it done. That offensive line is great. And unlike DeAndre Swift, he just goes north, south, yep. nose to the end zone, and, you know, keep doing it. If they get there, he's going to get a touchdown. David Montgomery, 17 for 67 and a rushing touchdown. And more importantly, three for 54 through the air. Ends up with a big week against Atlanta. As the Jets next week, any reason to go away from Monty moving forward? No, nope. especially with the Justin Fields questionable shoulder. Maybe he'll run a little less, but you were over 70% snaps and his his biggest usage of the season, which makes sense with Khalil Herbert out. Big game for Devin Singletary again, 18 for 86 and a touchdown. A couple weeks in a row where Devin Singletary has been pretty involved, scoring uh, some points for the Bills. It was a you know, a, a well below average game fantasy wise for Josh Allen. Devin Singletary is doing work, and um, we're not seeing the impact of Naeem Hines in any way, God, shape, and do form. Do you guys remember when they traded a, a draft pick for Naeem Hines? It's so strange. Here's his snap percentage um, uh, as as a Buffalo Bill: six percent, eight percent, and technically it's at zero percent, which I don't know how that's possible. He and, did have one attempt yeah, for that's, negative eight yards. The data hasn't come in yet. Yeah, but. Yeah, this is what you do. You trade for like Chase Claypool and you don't play him, and you trade for Naeem Hines and you don't play him, and you trade for Zach Moss and you don't play him, and you trade for Chase Edmonds and you don't play him. Well, the the Zach Moss was like when you make a trade in fantasy football and someone's like, I'm going to drop Zach Moss. Do you want me to just include him in the trade? And they're like, yeah, okay. Yeah, they're like, right. no, I want, to dro I want to drop Zach Moss. Give him to me. The the Chase Claypool one, at like to be now the th we're at the third game, that is, I think he's three for twenty-one over three games. It is baffling. In the like, I get okay. I'll give you a couple games. Brand new offense, trying to work your way in. But a, you traded a two, and this guy's not on the field when you need. You really need to evaluate. He will be heading into the the last year of his contract. Yeah, you got to force him on the field. And he's going to be talking about. Well, I'd like a contract extension, please. You traded a second rounder for me. It's it's very very interesting fifth, what they're doing. Fifth most routes run like he's running behind everybody, everybody. Yeah. Josh Jacobs another big game 24 for 109 he's running well this year he's gonna yep. get paid I think Looks Mike great. and I were talking about it but it's like he is the kind of free agent running back where a team will look to him at his age with this year's production and say we'll just make you our guy like that's going to happen someplace yeah, he's only 24 years old so, from a dynasty perspective, it wasn't looking as good for Josh Correct. Jacobs before this year, and it's looking pretty strong right now. A lot stronger than somebody like David Montgomery, who was losing, uh, you know, work to to Khalil Herbert. Guess he gets an opportunity towards the end of the year to do his thing. Which hasn't he had like two really strong year end finishes to help fantasy yes. managers in the playoffs? Yeah, he has. So uh, setting up again, Najee Harris. We talked about it. He's going to be solid moving forward. If Jalen Warren is out and he's, you know, like Jason said, looking a little healthier, two good games since the bye. Wide receiver studs, Devontae Adams, you know, <laughs> it, it's wild because he had, he had a full game in the first half again. This has uh, been happening. And then in the second half, it was slowing down, but he ends up with the game winner, 7 for 141 and 2. Target counts over the last three weeks. Squeaky wheel going on here, 17, 14, 13. You're allowed to whine if if doing the thing, mm -hmm. uh, throwing them the ball a bunch, results in games like this. Yeah, and it coincides with the absence of Darren Waller and Hunter Renfro, so they're not going anywhere. Like, 13 targets is his low for the last three weeks. I'm guessing that's his low for the next three weeks. I don't think there's many wide receivers you'd want over him to finish the season. No. Amari Cooper proved that neutral territory with no sneers and jeers. Yep. yep. He looked so good. Eight for one, 13 and two, as did Donovan and Peoples Jones. He scored, baby. Five for 61 and good one. Good work, Donovan. Um, they are at home next week against Tampa Bay. Okay, so Amari Cooper's in. Joshua Palmer, 10. <laughs> Thank you. Well deserved. T. Higgins, nine for 148. Josh Palmer, eight for 106 and two. 
Palmer will be, uh, you know, like Jason said, if, if Mike Williams is out, I, I'm going to keep playing Josh Palmer. It will get more complicated if Mike Williams returns, but let's worry about that then. Mm -hmm. Christian Watson, the two touchdowns on Thursday night. Chris Olave. Hey. We had a big game, 5 for 102 and 1, including a 52-yard touchdown, I think. Yeah, some, it was very, very large. Demarcus Robinson, 9 for 128. Dude, got, Mike, you watched every snap of this game. He uh, Robinson's the dude. Like We, we keep thinking, well, it's going to be Duvernay. It's not. It, it's it's Demarcus Robinson. Is that why the Ravens' offense was so bad? Maybe. May like, maybe it shouldn't be Demarcus I, Robinson? The game plan for the Ravens was so bizarre because it feels like – it. and this is just anecdotally because we're trying to watch, you know, eight games at the exact same time, but I'm pretty uh, interested in that game since Lamar Jackson's my fantasy quarterback. It's just – it's hand the ball off and throw short. Like, it's – it's way too much. Way non -stop too much. screens. Yeah, not not challenging the the defense down the field enough, in my opinion. But if Mark, you know, if Demarcus Robinson continues to to be the number one target getter, he's going to be important. I mean, yeah. he is the wide receiver six right now, so far on the week. George Pickens four for eighty three oh, and a touchdown. Almost had another one. He just uh, Mr. Pickett. Yeah, a little bit was uh, he missed the mark, but Pickens is. Uh, Every game, there's a play or two with George Pickens where you're like, whoa, that guy's good. Yes. Um, moving forward, you got to like him more than Deontay at this point. For right? sure. For sure. I mean, when you talk about big plays, uh, I, don't, I don't love the Steelers' offense. Um, I've been very, very disappointed in Kenny Pickett. Uh, and so uh, what, I, what I've seen is like, ugh, it's, it looks like a – it looks like a lowly drafted rookie quarterback, and that's, you know, middle of the first round. Uh, seems like that's where he should have gone. He can do enough plays, to, to, but you need the big plays. You can't just have the little dink and dunks, and that's all Deontay Johnson's doing. I believe the Pickens touchdown was something like 22 yards, and it was the longest touchdown of the season for the Steelers. Oh, man. Traylon Burks, 7-for-111 seven on Thursday night. Uh, keep your eyes on him. Yeah. Be part of the waiver show. Allen Robinson scored as well on five targets, whatever. Uh, Travis <laughs> Kelsey. Oh, man. He's overpowered. I feel like <laughs> I feel like the game designers here really need to yeah. scale back on Travis Kelsey. This and, is not really fair. And, he's just, and he was stunting on people, like, while running the touchdowns in. Like, this is – This was Derwin James, who's yeah. like – Great, I mean, Travis Kelsey Just was so giving him the business. I've traded for Kelsey in every league that I <laughs> yeah. care, and that I care about because I feel like he's a cheat code. Like you said, he's overpowered. So I watch these games and I try to figure out how this rumbling white man just finds a way to be open and then pull away from people, and it's just not stoppable. I mean these these crossing patterns that. Andy Reid calls not just for him, but I mean jo Jody Fortson caught a touchdown, right? And then, or a big play down the sideline, big not play, a touchdown, yes. but uh, yeah, you know Noah Gray getting mm -hmm. open, like the mismatches that this offense creates, you can't stop it. Like he's done it for too many years. Yeah, and and I thought at age thirty three he would start to slow down, but he just hasn't, and he never looks like he's that fast. But I think this is a train situation. You know, we've talked about like sure. it does seem okay. like a train situation. Yeah. Stop. Trains can't. <laughs> you know, they're they're so big they don't look like they're moving as fast as they are, but they are you know, Travis Kelsey's just actually really fast. It just he's always look going like downhill. It because he's always going downhill. He just he's pulling away from really fast defenders. That last one where Derwin James just dove and couldn't get to him and couldn't cover him. Yeah. It's really frustrating when you play against Travis Kelsey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you almost uh, were set to steal a dynasty victory from me. I know, and then every time I thought, I am I might actually take this, there's another Travis Kelsey touchdown, and I'm like, someone tackle this man! <laughs> uh, Austin Hooper. Hey. Okay. Two touchdowns on Thursday night. Juwan Johnson. Mike. Yeah, baby! Juwan uh, Johnson. Keeps getting it done. Another That's, touchdown. That four out of five, the four out of the last five games, he is at least in the top eight, top five, and three of them. I I know it's powered by touchdowns, but that's pretty good for tight end. Like they, he, Jawan Johnson. If you if you you're like, 
who the heck is Juwan Johnson? I understand because uh, he was he was not drafted, but he's one of these giant guys that played wide receiver and then moved over to tight end. So he has moves and abilities that a lot of tight ends. He's do not he's have. the monster that stole the powers from Adam Troutman, sure, and Blake Jarwin sucked yes. them both up. He's the tight end seven on the season. Yes, Pat Fryermuth target share continues oh. to rise. Galuth. Eight for 79. Dawson Knox, seven for 70. Best this, game from Dawson Knox. That was wild. And he plays against Detroit this coming week. I think it's a great matchup for Knox. Mark Andrews, six for 63 on the return. It's nice to see. Do a little bit more, but nice. Yeah, no Kelsey. I mean. Yeah, exactly. That was Studs of the Week presented by Madewell. Don't wait to upgrade your denim game. Go to madewell.com today for $20 off your next pair of jeans. Use the code FOOTBALLERS20. Yeah, go, go give them some love. New sponsor. Yeah, yeah. They're made well. They got, they got good clothes, man. Made really well. Great stuff. Pooped in his big boy pants. Well, 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 Mr. Allen. 18 for 27, one touchdown. Yeah. What a loser. Three yeah. for seven on Put the ground. Put him in a body bag. Trade Josh Allen away. The Detroit next week, that's a tough matchup. Get rid of this guy. Yeah, this was the first week all season that he has been a disappointment. He has not been outside of being a quarterback one until week 11. That might have been his worst fantasy performance in a long, long time. Probably. Because he normally, if he doesn't get it done through the air, he normally makes up for it on the ground. Uh, but no, the, we, we were being sarcastic. Of course. Please continue to play him uh, and it will work out for you. Russell Wilson? Wilson. Wilson. Not even the Raiders <laughs> could do it again. He sucks, man. <laughs> so, I mean, so let's go back to the question from earlier. Oh, Which man. locker room do you want for the next 10 years? You want the Zach Wilson locker room or the Russell Wilson? The Wilsons. Um, Man, I feel like at least with Russ. It's more positive? Can, it, it's, it's more positive and you can have – trust in the veteran who's done it before there's less um <laughs> yeah, struggling I, mean, I, I don't want either of these guys Zach, these Zach. guys suck and 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 russell wilson has proven to me now that it will never change no coach change will change it no health uh shoulder recovery it doesn't make sense he's done it, career is over it does not i'll make take owen sense. wilson yeah, he could at least wow. like really ignite the locker room with his charisma. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, Lamar Jackson! Look, look you go this way. Jeremy you wants go that way, and then ka-chow. Jeremy wants the the volleyball from Castaway. That's his vote for Wilson. Oh, nice. Um, same passer rating, actually. <laughs> uh, Lamar Jackson. He just hasn't been good so, in a while. So six, uh, I looked this up yesterday, six of seven weeks um, with one or fewer touchdown passes and six of seven weeks with 20 or fewer fantasy points. That's the that's the Lamar Jackson yeah. situation right now. Lamar Jackson. And Mike was screaming at the TV, just screaming through the well, screen. Run! Run the ball! Yes, I wanted him to run and... Uh, I don't have the number in front of me, to be fair to Lamar Jackson. The the dropsies that were going on for the Baltimore Ravens yesterday was infuriating. Uh, and it's what you were saying, Jason, of like, well, if Demarcus Robinson is actually the number one target, I, I, I can't believe that this team didn't make a trade at the deadline. No, like knowing where you were with Rashad Bateman and knowing that behind Rashad Bateman was just – the Duvernay and, and Robinson are fine wide receivers, but you don't have a number one, and you need to have a number one. You, you, yes, Mark Andrews is a true alpha on the field, but when this team has had success, they've had at least one counterpart to Mark Andrews. So it's it's very frustrating, and I don't even I don't know what you do with Lamar Jackson other than you keep playing and I, hope that they get out of this funk. Yeah, I mean, I feel like you you need to try to move on from Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson. But to where? To, to uh, Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert didn't have a, a nuclear day yesterday, but I do. I would rather have Herbert down the stretch That's than Lamar fair. Jackson. And with Lamar Jackson in a trade, you, you can get something like that done because he still has massive upside name recognition history, all of that. But since week three, and remember, week two, 
he was the quarterback one. Mm -hmm. Week three, he was the quarterback one. Yeah. He looked like he was going to be this year's, you know. Lamar Jackson. <laughs> this, yes, this year's 2018 Lamar Jackson. Um, since that time, he has one game where he scored 20 points. He's yep. the quarterback 14 since week four. The biggest thing is the explosive play problem. I mean, if you take away J.K. Dobbins, Mark Andrews, Rashad Bateman, like you said, it, it's a problem. He doesn't have somebody that can go, you know, and make a spectacular play. And so it's all slow drives, survive the day. Eh, it sucks. Yep. Kirk Cousins, not a good game. No. No, 12 for 23 for 105. Still better than Zach Wilson. He uh, just he just took another sack right now. Yeah, he's I'm not the plane ride with the shirt off and the jewelry. No, nope. for Kirk Cousins. This was the plane ride with the shirt off and mummy wrapped. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's got just, medical just ice, ice bags yeah, everywhere. Just <laughs> everywhere. Kachow. Uh, Saquon Barkley. Man. What happened? Fifteen <laughs> for twenty-two uh, against Detroit. We he's all supposed to be all. All three of us paid up to to somehow fit him in our DraftKings lineup because against Detroit, Saquon, who's been the best running back in fantasy football, in the second best matchup in fantasy football, it made no sense. Matt Burita stole the touchdown. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Snap Goblin Extraordinaire. <laughs> Uh, but our uh, Jason and I's other DraftKings starting running back, Damian Pierce, went uh, 10, 10 for 8. Not matchup proof. Apparently not. <laughs> Every week he has a monster oh, run. Man. Washington not this week. Washington hopped out to a massive quick lead. Uh, there was a pick six early in that game. Yeah, that's true. Uh, from the Manders. And so you did worry a little bit about game script. I don't have the snap numbers in front of me, but here are the opportunities that get, that uh, Pierce has had over basically the last month since the bye. 24 opportunities, 20, 27, 20, and then this last week, 13 opportunities. He just didn't get to touch the ball that much because the entire second half, they were throwing the ball so much that's not really Pierce's specialty. Nick Chubb, 14 for 19 against Buffalo, and people have been running on Buffalo. Yeah, it was that was sad. Three for 48 through the air, so it, it wasn't a complete destruction. And like the big names, Saquon, Chubb, Pierce, Dalvin Cook, 11 for 72. Uh, all right, but he didn't score and he didn't catch any passes. Yeah, he didn't look bad. Uh, he, he Watching the game, he ran well, just no opportunities. I uh, didn't make uh, Monday pun day, but I'm curious because since I'm testing the new comedic yeah, avenues, yeah, yeah. I did see inches Sanders. I like okay. it. I'm a okay. big fan. It's not a, of, not okay. a pun. It's but not a. It's not a pun, but it's still some good wordplay there. Okay, thirteen for forty-seven. I would have gone with like kilometers and really stick it to the, the well, metric like, like system. Like a subtle, like a subtle distance joke. Yeah, mm. I like mm. inches. Yeah, inches is better. Mm. Uh, thirteen okay. for forty-seven. <laughs> Daryl Henderson, two for nine. D so Daryl Henderson was unused in this game. His snap count was minuscule completely played behind um cam Akers, yeah as well as uh kyron kyron williams put kyron in the game they did rams no more don't give cam Akers 14 carries give them to kyron uh deontay foreman didn't play Dude. the falcons falcons yeah the uh we if you joined us for sunday live we were expressing our hesitation for Deontay Foreman of yeah the volume should be there but he's had such juicy matchups and 160 yard run this is not surprising to me and now he gets to take on Denver I would be trying to find a different option if possible but I I get where we are in the season. yeah if your trade deadline is still open and you can try to get something for him I would oh, it's too late yeah I mean off this off this uh bad week not gonna be a whole lot of suitors Jets running backs didn't help much. Uh, eight for nineteen, seven for ten for Carter and Robinson. Ty Johnson actually had more snaps than James Robinson in a game that was competitive. That's a red alert right there. Like Michael Carter is a desperation play, and the other guys are goodbye. Yeah, Kenyon Drake. Yeah, disappointing. I, uh, the Gus, the Gus bus, where uh, while we were led to believe he was going to be uh, fueled up and ready to go, was in fact inactive. For this week and Kenyon Drake 
Could not get it done. They, and they kept giving the ball to Justice Hill. <laughs> yeah, Justice Hill. What had, are we doing, Ravens? He had 10 opportunities, 7 for 30 on the ground, 3 targets, 3 receptions. Brian Robinson, 15 for 57, did not get in the end zone, did not catch a pass. Disappointing game from him because Houston. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you thought he would get more work. Gibson played well ahead of him, um, out-touching him in every measurable way. What was Gibson? Gibson had a hundred plus yards from scrimmage. Or how many? Uh, what was the carry counts? Twenty one. No wait, twenty one opportunities. Gotcha. Eighteen for seventy two. Three yep. ca three catches. So more more carries, more efficient. All right, wide receivers on the dud list. Tell me if you are concerned about any of these fellas. Adam Thielen, three targets, two catches. I mean, there was it's the, the same situation. This, this was the game of three and outs. That being said, they play against. New England and the Jets the next two weeks, those are those are very good defenses. So if they can't I, – I know they lost their left tackle early in this game, and I haven't seen any news on that. We need to check in on that because based on what happened at that left tackle spot during the game, um, they need him back. Justin Jefferson, also 3 for 33. We talked about it earlier. CeeDee Lamb. Five for 45, just wasn't a big game. A.J. Brown, uh, five for 60. It's been a couple of rough weeks for A.J. Brown. Yeah, it has. Tyler Boyd, two for 42. That was I must have missed shocking. the two. It must have been the last they, two because was, he was 0 for 5. It was, late, it was later in the game. But, yeah, wild to, for Joe Burrow to have such a successful game and seven targets for Boyd and only two for 42. D.J. Moore, three for 24. Which, uh, for Tyler Boyd, and it, we probably – did we, we mentioned the Jamar Chase thing at the top of the show, did we? Uh, I don't think we did. Okay, so Jamar Chase was spotted off crutches. They're saying he could possibly practice this week. I I would be planning for one more week without Chase, which means that you know Tyler Boyd will be in play against Tennessee. It's a, it's a good matchup. But your chance with Tyler Boyd as a focal point of your starting roster, that is coming to an end. All right, we have DJ Moore's game. It's a, that's just a DJ Moore game. Yeah, Terry yeah, McLaurin Baker look, game. looked like he was starting on fire. Four for fifty-five, though not a not a big week for McLaurin. This is what happens against Houston. We we talked about it in the week leading up to it, and on the Sunday live show. If you get out to a big lead on Houston, pick six. You just and they did. You just don't need to throw the ball that it's, much. I think they are ranked fourth in fantasy points given up to quarterbacks. Yeah, it's legit. <laughs> so it's like two a two a and the Dolphins. Two and the Dolphins play them next week. And it looks – I mean, it's not like you're really benching Tua. Uh, but at the same time, you need to understand that if, you know, the, a sack fumble for a touchdown and uh, one long Jeff Wilson, Raheem Mostert run, they're not going to be, you know, giving up a ton of passing yards to Tua. We'll, we'll see. The The Dolphins strike me as a team. like They're going to throw no matter what. And I, I think they're willing to pour it on. Yeah, I mean, maybe. I'm just saying Houston, over the course of the year, yeah. is giving up the fourth least points to quarterbacks. Uh, Deontay Johnson, just five targets in this game, four for 21. He is reaching the uh, not a – I mean – Not a must roster. No. I mean, Jacoby Myers, four for 52. Garrett Wilson, two for 12. Um, he had been on a hot streak and – Not his fault. No, I mean this game, the the New England Patriots against the Jets, you know, were were really really criticizing Zach Wilson, not giving enough criticism to the Patriots side of the ball, and not giving enough credit to the defenses on both sides. We we talked about liking both of these defenses for fantasy purposes. If you played either, you were thrilled, obviously more so with the Patriots uh walk-off special teams touchdown at the end of the game, but this game was 3 to 3. It was about to go to overtime at 3-3, three to three, and basically this was a competition of which team could sack the other quarterback more. And uh, I, I think you just you got to kind of throw this game out. Uh, we did get news just now that the Lions are designating Jamison Williams to return. He will practice today. That's fun. Yeah. yeah. yeah that, that. So he was on pop. Is, is that the – I don't know if that's the same rules as the IR. Like is that the 21-day window? Is it does it function the same? I don't know off the top okay. of my head. Uh, but he is a very dynamic player who I think will instantaneously get a lot of targets if he's playing. Yeah, I, th I think the the three wins in a row 
for the Detroit Lions certainly helped keep this in play. So uh, Jamison Williams on the way back. Disappointment at the tight end position. Yeah, there were some some bummers this week. Dalton Schultz just three for twenty two. Uh, it kind of fits in with what happened with CeeDee Lamb. Like mm-hmm. Tony Pollard with two receiving touchdowns, uh, you just – and they mopped the floor with Minnesota. There was no fourth quarter, really. You just didn't need Schultz and CeeDee Lamb. Yeah. Uh, these, more competitive game, you'll get more Schultz. Absolutely. Um, TJ Hawkinson had nine targets but only five for 34 in that same game. Same story. Both of these tight ends, if your trade deadline is still open – are, are tight ends I would be targeting. I think that their consistent floor is going to be higher than almost everyone else out there. The For for the people out there, the top 12 currently, without the Monday night game, the, the top 12 tight ends includes names like uh, Austin Hooper, Logan Thomas, Tyler Higbee, Jonu Smith, Taysom Hill finally got back in the top 10, jo- Jody Fortson, Harrison Bryant. This was one of those weeks where you had Travis Kelsey or it didn't. you didn't really lose anything. Uh, Cole Komet, three for 35. He doesn't get bonus points for one of the coolest catches at tight end that you've seen oh, in a long that time. that catch was boss. It was so good. Justin Fields ripped a laser beam down the field that was way overthrown. And as a tight end, Cole Komet just goes up one hands this thing while getting crushed by a defender. It was awesome. You remember Cole Komet and uh, Claypool played together in Notre Dame? I they did, were teammates. I did not remember yeah. that. Yeah, they were they were buddies. I look forward to them playing together again. <laughs> <laughs> Greg Dulcich, four for thirty. Hey, hey. Uh Wilson issues. Robert Tunyon, two for nineteen. David Njoku, two for seventeen. Yeah, it was unfortunate. David Njoku was it's one of those names of he was so good that I was willing to go right back to him off of the injury, but it did not work out. Harris, I mean, Harrison I mean, Bryant got a whole bunch of targets, so the, the process was sound of they're going to feature the tight end again. I'm just saying, like, you should have played Kelsey over all these guys. I, yeah, uh, yeah. My bad. Good analysis. <laughs> uh, anything else? Any news? We got waivers. We got streamers on tomorrow's episode. Got the Megalodon oh, on oh. Wednesday. <laughs> Don't miss it. The head of the holiday. You can't. It will overtake all storage you auto, on your phone. It'll auto play. <laughs> <laughs> if you get a notice that says memory running low, it's, it's us. It's just the Megalodon listed through, and then you can then you can reclaim your phone. That's right. Yeah. Make sure you upgrade your storage if you can. <laughs> uh, it will auto play on your phone too. Yes. So just be ready. <laughs> be ready. Uh, okay. Well, we'll we'll wrap it up. Monday Night Football, 49ers Cardinals this evening. Good luck to everybody trying to pull out a win. Until tomorrow, goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.